Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from Impact Church. God wants to get involved, but God literally has established it that, that the earth he has given to man. So Genesis 1, 26, he said, let them have complete authority. Who's them? Man. Who has complete authority over all of the earth? Who? You. And that means that you also have complete authority over the destiny that God has poured into your heart. Whatever he's put in your life, you're the captain, you are the leader, you are the head honcho, you're the CEO of God's purpose in your life. And there's a partnership that you have to have. God speaks to us, but then we have to engage that and we have to do those things. It says work miracles, work those things, work out that destiny, work out your salvation, work it out, bring out, bring into manifestation what he's spoken in your life because what he spoke to you, it's a miracle, it's full of power to produce right now. So he's given that responsibility to us. Psalm 115, 16 says, The heaven, the heavens, even the heavens, they're the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Psalm 8, 6 says, You made him. That's where it has to be an angelic being in Psalm 8 that's looking in and going, What is man that you're mindful of him? I mean, they, they are like annoying sometimes. I mean, they, you give so much to them and yet they screw up over and over again. I can't believe that you're so committed to them. But he says, What is man that you're mindful of him? You made him have dominion over the work of your hand, you put all things under his feet. So if God's hand is going to move, if his dominion and his kingdom is going to be manifest, God needs some human partnership to manifest what he's doing. And that it means your life too. I mean, if you're waiting, like any time now, it's your turn. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's your turn. He really did his job. When he said it's finished, he really meant it's finished. High five. It's your turn. Just high five your neighbor. Say, you're up. Boom. You are up. All right. Two ways, two basic ways that God's glory is revealed through you. Two basic ways. All right. Listen, consciously and unconsciously. What do you mean by that? Unconsciously. You remember Peter? It said his shadow healed people. It wasn't really his shadow. It seemed like that, but it wasn't like his sad shadow was full of substance. It means that Peter, he radiated health. Literally, like Proverbs says, when you trust God, you're so wrapped up in him. Peter was radiating health. He had a force field around him. Then when he went to Max Milk to get milk, people were just touched, moved on. I mean, people got convicted. They, they, they'd fall out in the line waiting to get milk. Go, I don't know what's going on, but I feel God's glory. Ah! You know, people jumping out of wheelchairs going, oh, what happened? What was that? And then they started going, you know what? This happens wherever Peter goes. And people literally, that became so clear to people, they would find out where Peter was going and they'd lay themselves in that place. If he was on his way to Max Milk, he would run with your sick friends and you'd put them there at the cash out counter just so Peter's shadow could touch them because people were being healed just by coming in the circumference of his life. Wow. That's unconscious. You know what's beautiful about an unconscious influence? There's no manipulation in it. There's nothing in it. It's just you going about your day and people being radically touched because there's evidence of God's glory in your life. And that's so free. It's so beautiful. You didn't preach a sermon. You didn't even say anything. It's just God's glory gushing out of you. There's a river of life flowing out of me. And that's an unconscious manifestation of God's glory that's happening every time, every day. How many that is your normal life? It just happens all the time. People getting healed, touched, delivered, set free. Everywhere you go, just every day, it's just like, oh my God. That's your reality. That's the way it is, all right? So then there's consciously, though. Consciously. Consciously means where you're engaged. And if it's consciously, then you have to hear his voice. If you're constantly manifesting him, then you got to be listening to his voice. Or you've got a revelation that it is his will to heal, so you just believe that you've got a responsibility to set people free. And you do it because you're walking in the revelation of that. So there's conscious and there's unconscious. But hearing God's voice is really, really important. Can I get an amen? Jesus said, the words I speak aren't my own. I get them from my Father. I'm speaking only what he says. Jesus also said, I don't even do anything on my own, but I only do what I see the Father doing. He's in this very intimate relationship with God. He's listening to his voice, and he's being directed by him. So let me tie this into the Christmas season. You ready? So Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 32. It says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. 
And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Wow. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Let me go by that again. You ready? Holy Spirit was upon him. He'd been revealed by the Holy Spirit that he would see the Christ. So he came to the temple led by the Spirit. A lot of Holy Ghost stuff going on right there. There's a guy who's hearing the voice of the Spirit of God, led by the Spirit of God. So he saw this when he was there. He he was there according to the custom. He saw the parents brought the child Jesus. And there he was right at that time, right when God told him to be there. He took up the child in his arms and he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen the cross, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. No, he said, my eyes have seen a baby. My eyes have seen the Christ. It's done. It's finished. I saw the baby, and just seeing this baby, I have seen the salvation of God. There's a guy who understood that I have seen God fulfill his word, and he sent his son, born of a virgin. This is so awesome. I can go home in peace now because it's finished. And yet all he saw was a baby. But he saw in that child, it is absolutely, totally fulfilled. What do you see right now? What are you seeing? Because you got to see, you got to see, especially at Christmas, the volume is so much louder at Christmas. You got to see that God is engaged in your world and he's engaged in your life. So he said, I've seen it. I can go home now. I can do it according to your word. Verse 30, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the faces of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Wow. To the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Now Simeon, Simeon, his name means hearkening and able to hear. That's what Simeon means. So, so I mean, that's a great name to call. It's not a surprise that that guy could hear because every day his mom said, hearing, hearkening, hearing come for dinner. Yes, mom. So he was spoken over all his life that you can hear, you can hear, you can hear, you can hear. Sadly, the body of Christ, it's like they've been spoken over all their lives. You can't hear. God's not going to get involved. Your next best event is getting out of here and going to glory. That's not the truth. The truth is God is in you to change your world right now. God came and he made his fixed abode and dwelling place in you so that you can manifest consciously and unconsciously the glory of God. Amen. So he was tuned into heaven 101. I don't know if there is a heaven 101. I'm on 103.5 myself. But there's a frequency of heaven. The voice of God is constantly declaring things. In this room, you could get a tuner and you could tune into frequencies. You could listen to stuff. If you had a strong enough receiver, you could listen to stuff from all over the world. There's frequencies going on, but there is a frequency of heaven that God wants you to be attuned to. And Simeon was attuned to that, and Simeon saw incredible results. So someone in every generation is hearing and declaring the purpose of God into earth. Someone in every generation is hearing and declaring the purposes of God into earth. Even for Jesus to come, even at Christmas time, there had to be someone, there had to be a community that was declaring The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. There were people believing in that day that this is it. There are people who'd received revelation from heaven. There's people the Holy Spirit had moved on, prophets and prophetesses who were declaring, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And I believe they had to declare that for him to come. And I believe whatever you think is coming, coming, coming in your life, you got to declare it's here for it to happen. Whatsoever you desire and believe when you pray, when you ask God, when you're talking to him, believe that you have it and you'll get it. You have to declare, got it! Got it! Seems strange, doesn't it? I got to say, got it before I get it? Yes. You got to say, got it, because you know what? It's already done. It's all done. It's all done in the spirit. So just cry out, I trust you. Got it! Because it's according to your word. I've got it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? I see a hand waving over there. That's awesome. So God's looking for people right now. So let me just look at a few things. You ready? It's a, probably about a 20-point sermon, but I wrapped it up into four points, a bunch of sub-points. Number one, you ready? Number one, hearing is heartfelt. Hearing is heartfelt. In 1 Kings 3, 9, it talks about Solomon, and Solomon's about to take over. And he's about to you know, rule over these people. David, his father, amazing kingdom. And here's Solomon now. He's going to take over. And Solomon came to the Lord, and the Lord said, Speak to me. Tell me, son, what do you need? What is it you would like? What would you like for, for, for to run and to rule and to judge these people? What would you like? And here's what he said. He said, Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people. 
That's the word shama or shamea. Shamea, to hear or to listen attentively with interest. And my heart, my inner man, my heart, my inner man, may my heart, over 500 times in the Bible, 500, I think 85 times that word is there, translated heart more than 500 times. So he said, give me a listening heart. Give me a heart that is tuned into you. All I really want to lead and to guide these people and to fulfill this call on my life, all I want, this is the one thing I desire from you, is that I might have a heart that is fully attuned to you and that understands your voice and hears from you. That's what I desire. 